The 911 has an incomparable cult status. It is an icon among sports cars, and you would have to work very hard to find another car that is as timeless and yet as modern as the 911 at the same time. To be iconic, cars have to steal the public's attention. And over the last five decades, Porsche have done this through motorsport, conquering various disciplines and events. But with the 911, Porsche have also done this through their aesthetic, as only Porsche can, using colours and key details that have kept the 911 in the forefront of people's memory. In 2022, there were two new 911 variants launched, both of a very low volume nature and both taking their influences from the past, albeit in a very different vein from one another. Rallying has been in the 911's DNA since nearly the very beginning, remembering that the 911 came out in 1964. The following year in 65, an entry was made into the Monte Carlo Rally, Herbert Lynch and Peter Falk taking their car to a fifth place overall on debut. And then in the later 70s, the East African Safari Rally with an SC derivative, 4,691 kilometres and Porsche, the only team to bring both of their cars home. It was at the end of the 70s that the ultimate long distance event was conceived. A rally that would take cars nearly 10,000 kilometers from Paris to the Senegalese capital, Dakar. The event grew and grew over the first few years until 1984 when Porsche was ready to attack the event for the first time, thanks in part to their stalwart competitor, Jackie X, they tackled the event with a new car, or at least a derivative, of the 911 that would lead to bigger things and conquered the Paris-Dakar over all. The 953 left such a strong mark on Porsche and its reputation in a new form of motorsport that in 2022, its influence has translated into this, the new 992 911 Dakar a car that is so full of new ideas and yet uses all of the old ideas that gives us what 911 is famous for. So how do we make a 911 cross terrain at high speed? Well, we have to start from the suspension because the first thing we need is ground clearance. And after that, a level of compliance in the suspension that allows for rocks and other pieces of terrain to be crossed without affecting the car's trajectory. The Dakar differs from every 911 in the range in just that department. First of all, it is 50 millimetres higher at its lowest point than a 911S, but it's capable of lifting another 20 by use of hydraulic struts at all four corners and a system that's very similar to axle lift, but acts all over the whole car. You wouldn't be surprised to know that there's a speed limit when the car is in its raised position, 170 kilometers an hour. The second way is traction. And with Pirelli, a tire has been developed specifically for the Dakar that allows not only resilience to puncture over rocks and other types of terrain, but an ability to still maintain lateral adhesion when the car is being used on bitumen for traditional sports car driving. An interesting fact about the Pirelli Scorpion is that they are speed rated to 240 kilometers an hour. The Dakar's rugged appearance is not the work of the styling department alone. It is for a purpose. Robust plastics and a stainless steel bash plate will contribute to giving the car not only its resilience to stones and other debris, but a very, very good slope angle and ramp angle when the car is used over big dips and large climbs. Weight saving is still forefront in the thinking of the engineers. Carbon fiber reinforced plastic bonnet, much like the GT3, as well as the roof panel. A lot of thinking has to go into the 911's cooling under normal circumstances, but even more so for an off-road car. As we know, 911 has radiators and oil coolers inside the nose, but in the Dakar, they've got vastly uprated fans to cope with high demands, but at low road speeds. Another prominent feature are the red permanent painted tow hooks, front and rear of the car, a styling feature, but also very functional. And this curious feature, poking out of the carbon lid, is actually a permanent power outlet 
so when you need to plug in your spotlights as part of the off-road design package, you can. Whilst we are in a very familiar environment, there are one or two things that differ in the Dakar from the other 911s in the range, and they are mainly inside this instrument panel. When you rotate your mode switch, don't expect to find Sport and Sport Plus as you would in a conventional 911. You'll be greeted by rally and off-road modes, the two of which offer separate programs for different type of terrain. The rally mode allows lots of movement in the suspension with the intent of moving at high speed over surfaces like gravel, wet grass and mud with ruts. Whereas the off-road mode allows the driver to tackle circumstances like deep sand, sand dunes, circumstances where suspension movement isn't terrifically important, but ground clearance is. And in that mode, the car does automatically rise up the 20 millimeters. Anybody following a Dakar will be left in no doubt of the car's intent. High ground clearance, nearly 200 millimetres, and the same treatment of robust plastic with a stainless steel bash plate. Aerodynamics on an off-road car, particularly for stability, are far less important than they are for an on-road car. So at the top of the Dakar's rear is the CFRP fixed wing. Done away with active aero, it isn't important. Yet, management of thermals is very important and directing as much clean intake air into the big air filters, which are very well protected, is a big priority. So the combination of everything I've just explained and 353 kilowatts, we have taken all of the motorsport inspiration from 1984 and manifested it in this new car. Aesthetics in this instance have been the foundation for the inspiration that has given Porsche reason to create the Sport Classic. A car which summarises the first 10 production years of the 911 in its details inside and outside the car. To use aesthetics alone is not Porsche's style, so the foundation of this car is as interesting as what you see on the outside. Unlike the Dakar, this isn't the first time we've seen a Sport Classic. No, there was an immediate forebear back in the 997 generation when we had the Sport Classic launched for the first time. But then it was on the basis of the Carrera S. It was given a wide body and a manual gearbox. This time round, Porsche have chosen the Turbo Coupe as the basis for this incredible car, but with some subtle differences. As we've all become used to the fact 911 turbos have been all-wheel drive for several generations, but not this one. Rear-wheel drive only, and the 3.8-litre twin-turbocharged flat six drives only the rear wheels through a seven-speed manual gearbox, making this plausibly one of the most exciting 911 turbo variations ever built. The Sport Classic sprouts period details everywhere you look, starting from the paint colour itself, Sport Classic Grey is a subtle metallic and it's hit off by painted on light grey stripes that accentuate the contours of the bonnet and the double dome roof. And small details like the period orange bar grille in the nose and in the wheel centres. And those wheels are an homage to the original Fuchs, which were first seen on the 911S in the late 60s. Gold badging and the very famous ducktail rear spoiler are two more details of the Sport Classic, the latest in the line of the Porsche Heritage Edition. When you sink into the interior of the Sport Classic, you're again reminded of how all the period details have come together to be reminiscent of the early 911s. Straight away from your vision forward, you're greeted by another early badge in the steering wheel centre hub. And as you look into the instrument panel, a tachometer styled exactly like the early short wheelbase cars with their green numerals. The interior is completely upholstered in natural leather in a contrast between black and classic cognac with various exclusive manufacturer details like the extended dashboard trim package. We also see inner door sill guards in leather, the center console vents in leather, the exclusive manufacturer insignia beautifully embossed into the center console's lid. The interior trim package in the doors, the dash and the console in open pore paldea. 
a beautiful finishing touch, again taking us back to the early cars. Atop the interior trim and the dashboard in each and every one of the 1250 Sport Classics is a limitation badge in the same gold as the badges on the exterior of the car. And what other interior feature in all of 911 folklore could be as iconic on the inside of the car as Pepita Houndstooth inserts in the seats in the front and the rear of the car? Now the sad thing is that not everybody can have a Sport Classic, but the wonderful thing about Porsche Centre Melbourne is that we are an exclusive manufacturer partner and the sales team is trained to be able to help you to personalise your 911, in fact many of our Porsche models, with features from exclusive manufacturer that are standard in the Sport Classic, giving you the opportunity to really build a car that is special to you, inspired by cars that are special to everybody.